Welcome back to the Pop 'em Don't Watch 'em Whiskey YouTube channel. Today in the house, K Luke, batch number two, the barrel strength from my boy Jonathan Misano over at Misano's Fine Wine and Spirits in beautiful Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Guys, if you did not see my review on batch one, please go check it out. When I reviewed batch one, I said it. I said this is old Carter level blending from Jonathan Misano. And some people were like, yeah, I don't know about all that. Then people started trying it. Fred Minnick tried it. And lo and behold, here we are on batch two. Comes in the top 25 of 2002, 2022 whiskeys for Fred Minnick. Whether you agree with him or not, look, he is the guy, he is the go-to. His list is very important in the whiskey world. Like I said, you, some people can disagree, but look, to come in top 25, to be a blend, small, you know, a small company out of Mississippi, to get onto that level, the whiskey's got to be good. That's what I'm trying to say here. It's not, that is not just going to sneak up on a list, you know, because it's some big company paying for it. Fred Minnick does everything blind. Do I agree with the way he does it? No. He does 100 whiskeys at a time. But that goes to show you what this whiskey did against 100 whiskeys comes in the top 25. And I said it about batch one. Jonathan is very big on the finish. He likes that mouthfeel and that finish. And when it comes to a blind, that is what's going to stick out. But just absolute flavor bomb on batch one. Today, we are getting into batch number two. Comes in at 119.1 proof. It's a Kentucky bourbon and Indiana bourbon blend. Without further ado, let's get into it. Now, he does do the 100 proof as well. Not everybody likes high proof, and that's okay. You know, if you're not a high proof guy, nothing wrong with that. This 100 proof blend, absolute perfect for you. It has a great balance of sweetness, and surprisingly, at that 100 proof, the finish, the mouthfeel, and the spice, it's all there for 100 proof. So if you like lower proof bourbons, definitely grab this, but only at 9th, I mean, well, 19 more points. It's, to me, it doesn't sound like a lot, but to the average person, and you know, that's not deep into barrel strength bourbons, I think they would really enjoy the 100 proof. But today, so in the glass to my right is the batch two. In the glass to my left is batch one. We're going to do a comparison. This is the first time that I've compared them side by side to see what the difference and the nuances are in each blend. Each blend, each batch is always going to be different. He wants it that way, and I don't blame him. Each batch have a different profile. So let's see about batch two. So I'm still getting, when I first got into this one, an overwhelming caramel-covered apple note. I don't know if you go to the, you know, down here in Louisiana, we have festivals and fairs. Caramel-covered apples or candied apples. That Granny Smith apple, they'll do a, a caramel cover over it. It's incredible, and that's exactly what I'm getting on the nose. You get black pepper, and I get a little bit of clove. If you de really dig in there, there's a, there's a very distinct clove note on there. So on the nose, it's, it's so balanced. So balanced, sweetness, spice. That's what you want in a good blend. And I know this is hard to describe, I don't know how to put this without sounding, you know, I can really, I can really differentiate the Kentucky notes and the Indiana notes, and I love that. I mean, it's just blended perfectly. One doesn't overtake the other one. They just marry perfectly. Jonathan Maisano on just another successful K. Luke release. Top 25 on Fred Minnick's 2022 whiskeys. Cheers.
Man, when that thing hits the palate, the cheeks, finish. Like I said, Jonathan is big on finish. Guys, as I'm talking, that finish is still going. It is long, strong, in a good way. This thing just punches you in the mouth with flavor. I mean, it makes your mouth warm. I'm having to keep swallowing. My mouth is just watering from how viscous this bourbon is. And that finish, man, that finish is just super long. And I've said this in the past. Guys know this about me. I'm not big on finishes. I like to have it, but it's not something where I'm like, oh, my God, it doesn't have a finish. You know, I like to have flavor. This has it all. I mean, that finish is incredible. So, mouthfeel, finish, balance, all there. Let's get in a sip, too. So, I'm not getting that heavy apple note that I get on the nose. I'm not getting it on the palate. What I get on batch, too, is very aged notes. I get it tobacco. I get leather on that, especially right on the back of the tone on the finish. I get a heavy leather note. And it's not, you get a little bit of spice, but it's not crazy spice. It's not going to overwhelm you with spice. A hint of dark fruits, but that tobacco note is really nice. The um, tobacco, the leather note is really nice in the back of the palate. This is very complex. It's so complex as I'm sitting here trying to pull these notes out. I mean, they're just, it, it's all over the place. But in a good way, man. The sweetness doesn't overwhelm you. It, it, it's, I got to go back. Let's go back for a third one because this one has so much going on. Tons of oak as well. This one has a lot of barrel influence. A lot of oak. I'm not getting too much fruit. A little bit of a dark, dark, dark raisin. Dried raisin. Well, rot raisin is a dried fruit. So, But as far as fruit, that's all I'm really getting on it. And that clove. That clove is still there. And that tobacco and that leather note. Beautiful bourbon. Let's get into now, I want to compare it to batch one. So this one is, again, on the nose, very sweet. Vanilla caramels, of course, but just heavy, heavy burnt caramels. So this one also has the fruit on the nose. That's tough. As much alike they are, is as much different as they are. So this one has a lot more spice. Jesus, that finish. I still can't get over how he blends this for finishes. It's unbelievable. So this one has a little more spice. I'm going to go with batch two. As far as Overall, batch two's got it. As great as batch one is, batch two took it to another level of complexity in that nose. Man, yep, batch two just has more barrel influence, more aged notes, but, but batch one is still an absolute hitter. Man, that is two really good blends. He's going to have to do a boo rye. He's gonna, I, I, like, I like to see him do a boo rye, a rye and a bourbon blend. Man. Yeah, I like batch two. Batch one's good, but batch two, I can see where that batch two can really stand out in a blind. Man, that is just, that is really good stuff. Guys, if you have not... Went and got a K-Luke yet, a K-Luke product, the 100 proof, the barrel strength. 
get over to my Sanos and it's starting to get more distributed. Hopefully 2023, it'll start getting released. Some more states in the South. Be on the lookout for that. But guys, another, like I said, great release. Number 24 on Fred Minnick's Top 100. Guys, if you get a K-Luke, if it's the 100 proof, if it's the barrel strength, if you get any of the world famous picks from my Sanos, you already know what to do. Pop them! Don't watch them.